All right, boys. There are times in my life where I have wondered how the heck can someone even write such an article, and if they have written it, how was it approved? There has to be some sort of a systematic way of reviewing articles, right? I mean, the article in question here is IGN's rating of Jujutsu Kaisen Shibuya arc. It's six out of ten for freaking for the love of God, and I have to say, whoever wrote this, bro, you didn't cook. You absolutely charred it and burnt it into pieces. I have to ask, did We both watched the same anime for God's sake. Anyways, let's see this article and debunk it bit by bit. All right, the article starts with mentioning that the cool fight scenes can't make up for a meandering story. Now, if you search in Google, the word meandering means something which doesn't has any definite direction or something which has a lot of curves and bends. So I would like to ask, what part of it was meandering? How it was something without a definite direction when literally all of the events had a series of flow to it? Think about it. First of all, Mikamaru's betrayal led to Kenjaku and Mahito healing his heavenly restrictions, which led to a battle between him and Mahito, which caused him to die. And from there on out, his plan started. And whatever followed led to Gojo getting sealed, which was an absolute master plan of Kenjaku. And with Gojo sealed, the entire society was thrown into chaos, with just a few grade ones and students in Shibuya, which ultimately led to the events of the Culling Games in the finale when Kenjaku released all of the spells. So I'm going to ask again, how is this a meandering story? Anyways, moving further in the article, we can see that it mentions the much-anticipated adaptation of the Shibuya arc has finally ended, and it delivered non-stop action, shocking death, and huge changes to the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. But is that enough? Though the fights are handsomely animated, and there are some moments of visual brilliance, the arc ends up being nonsensical fights after nonsensical fights. Dude, I'm trying to read this with a straight face, but I can't. Without much emotions in the story. <laughs> What? Who wrote this thing, dude? Who approved this script? It's fucking unprofessional. There's a cheapness to many deaths, and even though the story arrives at some big changes, it does so after a meandering story. Oh my god. All right. First of all, how are the deaths not enough, and how were the fights nonsensical? Let's talk about Mekamaru's death. His character's death was impactful and was a part of Kenjaku's plan. Let's be real. If Mekamaru had escaped the fight and survived, he would have informed Gojo and others about the trap in Shibuya. And even when he died, his character was of significance as he had continued to support the sorcerers. As for Nanami's death, it was impactful and by a lot. It was needed for Yuji's character development. Even the Author said that Nanami had served his purpose. I feel like people don't get the meaning which the author was trying to convey. That good people don't always win, and bad people are also going to win. The world is not a fair place. Eventually, it was also followed by Nobara's demise, which was equally impactful. Yuji saw one of his best friends die after his mentor's death too. I mean, the guy's whole life was in shambles because his dream was to help others and have a fulfilling life, and to be surrounded by his loved one when he. Dies. Sheesh. The guy couldn't even stand up if it wasn't for Todo, and those deaths strengthen his ideals when he beat Mahito with that "I am you" moment. So I'm asking once again: How are the fights nonsensical and <laughs> not emotional? And how were the deaths cheap? Jeez, what the hell, man? Did we even watch the same anime at this point? Anyways. The article later on mentions that the problem begins with the awkward chronology of the arc. It's been four years since we last saw Yuji and his friends, and the moment we are reunited with them, they are separated into dozens of teams and sent to respond to a full-scale attack of curse spirits in the Shibuya ward of Tokyo. All right. First of all, what do you expect the villains to do? Just chill and let the main cast have their fun and enjoy their life, dude. This is Jujutsu Kaisen, not freaking Naruto or Dragon Ball. the villains literally wait for the main character to power up and finish their thing just like when madara waited for hashirama <laughs> what the heck the meaning is that i repeat it again the world is not fair and sometimes the evil people win <laughs> how is it hard to understand all right the next thing that it mentions because the cast is separated at the beginning of the arc we tend to only see some of them right before they die making them seem like objects to be discarded rather than important fleshed out characters Oh my god I feel like I'm just going in loop reading this article is giving me a brain damage man it's a shame because Yutsu Kaisen was all
always better when focusing on its larger ensemble rather than Yuji himself. Seeing him mostly react to villain's plot while his friends drop like flies make Yuji a worse character. Uh, I'm trying to read this with a straight face at this point but I can't. And weakens the larger ensemble too. Likewise, having the villain get away from a fight right before losing time and time again quickly becomes annoying and tiresome. Alright, dude. What do you expect a villain to do in real life? Sukuna is not like Nine Tails. The guy is pure evil. Yuji won't have an Naruto moment with Sukuna. Imagine Yuji saying that I went through the same pain as you, Sukuna. Lend me your power. That is going to be so cringe. As for Kenjaku, he is a messed up mastermind, and for Mahito, he doesn't care. I feel like I will be repeating the same things again and again, but God, do people even watch anime properly before writing these sort of articles? Right, let's see the verdict. The verdict being that Shibuya Arc sees Jujutsu Kaisen as its most action packed but the relentless bombardment of fight scenes ends up doing the characters, pacing and story a disservice. If it's spectacle you seek, look no further than these episodes. If you want action to service the plot and characters rather than the way around, this arc leaves a lot to be desired. Oh my god. I don't know man, how was the story a disservice? Everything was focused about the character development of Yuji and it literally delivered its message to yup i feel like i'm getting a lot of emotional damage after reading this article man all right that's about it for this video do let me know your thoughts in the comment section i shall see you all in the next video until next time peace out guys have fun